Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It's Cameron with Car Audio now again. Today I'm gonna to be demoing Sony's XAV 9500 ES head unit. This head unit is a part of Sony's latest lineup of car audio equipment, what's called the Mobile ES lineup. We've reviewed a few of their speakers earlier in the year. We were impressed with their performance, but it wasn't until recently that they, they announced the release of this new Mobile ES head unit to match up with the lineup of high-end speakers that they released earlier in the year. So we were lucky enough to, to get a sneak peek demo unit from, from Sony prior to the release, which is what you see here today. And, and I'm gonna fire it up and, and demo some of its key features and settings and show you what it's all about. And it's, it's worth pointing out, this head unit and its features are really geared towards audio control and, and output to give users full control over their audio and, and really to tailor the configuration of, of their their stereo. It's great for custom stereos. It's, I mean, it's great for, for any stereo for that matter. Uh, but but you'll really see here that, that the features are, are geared towards those audio control, audio settings. Uh, when, I, when I turn it on and start walking through the features, what this unit is not is a multimedia head unit at this time. That might change because you can basically do uh, easy upgrade and firmware upgrades on it. I'll show you that. But at this time, it's not really a multimedia head unit. I've reviewed a number of their other head units like the AX8100 preview, uh, a little earlier this year, which, which really skews further on the multimedia side with that HDMI input. Uh, web link. So if you're interested in, in multimedia, you might want to check out those reviews, which are also on my channel and on, on caraudionow.com. This unit really falls more on the audio quality and control side. So it's worth noting before I dive in here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is start the head unit up and show you the startup speed. Startup speed is, is something that Sony is well aware of, and, and typically their units are are lightning fast, they're pretty quick. They focus on it specifically as, as one of their features. So I'm gonna fire it up right now as if you were starting the car. And here we go right now. So you see the logo. Couple seconds here, there you go. So there it is, three to five seconds is, is typically what it is from what I've seen, uh, it's pretty quick. If you start the vehicle and flip it into reverse while it's starting up in this process, it's gonna default straight to the backup camera for you, worth pointing that all out. But overall, it, it's pretty quick. It's a pretty quick setup, um, startup. So now here you're seeing the default home screen. And I'll start by saying that this unit comes with a 10.1 inch capacitive HD screen. This is the largest of their head unit lineup right now. And one of the biggest changes between the AX lineup that's similar to this, uh, you know, for example, the 8100 is that this is a capacitive screen. It's glass, it feels and responds like your smartphone or your iPhone would versus those resistive screens that feel like they kind of have like a cushion in between the screen um, and, 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 you know, where you're touching. So the downside to capacitive is that you you can't really use anything besides uh, your fingers to touch it it has to be conductive is what it is so like you know I can't use a pen or you know your fingernails you can't really touch uh, the screen and 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 the screen won't won't respond to things that aren't uh, aren't your, your fingers basically so on a on a resistive screen you know on the flip side you can use anything it's good for for long fingernails it's good for using pens but on resistive screens, the overall image clarity and quality is normally lower. So capacitive touch screens are normally higher. Uh, you can kind of see the, the image a little bit better. Uh, overall, it's just a, a little bit of a better quality looking screen, uh, capacitive that is. Um, the, the resolution on this unit is 1280 by 720, which is great to see. It's higher than most of the units on the market today. Um, even though it's not a multi necessarily a multimedia head unit. It also has an anti-glare, and anti-glare is one of those things where you either hate it or you love it. It doesn't, it doesn't take away 100% of the glare ever, right? Uh, but it does do a good job at, at limiting 
you know, those, those peak, the worst glares that you're gonna get during the day so that you can at, at least see kind of what, what you're touching, what you're seeing on, on the screen. So it does, it does a good job at that. It also kind of creates this a, a little bit of a flat looking, you know, if you were, if you were to take and, and, and paint this with, with a, a, a flat transparent, you know, uh, paint, it kind of, it, it just gives the screen a little bit of a flat look more than one that, that doesn't have an anti-glare, you know, film on it. So I'm just going to go, go ahead and start going through the features here for you one by one, show you what it looks like and what's available on, on the screen. Before I start digging into the actual features though, you'll, you'll notice that the buttons on this unit are actually located on the top now, instead of on the face of the unit, like the, the, 8100 which which really gives it a sleek look on the face you don't have like the buttons on on the bottom here i like the look it makes it super clean one flat surface i love that but it also has these two new touch buttons two on the bottom left and right that can be customized to to what you want it to control and i'll go through those a little bit more when i get into the the settings the other thing you'll notice first here is the clock in the middle uh, obviously it's pretty big but this is fixed. Um, that was one of the questions that I had when I first saw this unit, or at least pictures of it. It's fixed. Uh, it does give it, you know, a luxury look. I, I personally like it. If you don't like it, you can't remove it. You can change the background though. The background right now is a default background and I'll go through in a little bit later in the review here or demo, how to, to go about uploading a, an image and customizing the background to what you want it to, to be. But let's start going through some of its features. I'll start with the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto feature. This is a net new feature uh, to Sony and it's super convenient in my opinion. So right now you'll see this Apple CarPlay logo here and uh, it's actually wireless. So like the, the, my phone is not hardwired into this device via, via Bluetooth. So every time you turn your car on now, and hook it in, you know, after you've hooked it into Bluetooth, obviously, um, and, and, you know, it, it'll actually become wireless. And, and so both Apple CarPlay and, and Android Auto, uh, Auto will, be, will be wireless. So, uh, you know, depending on whether you select it as default, so what you can do is you can hook up to Bluetooth, you'll choose whether you wanna use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto by default. Every time you get into the car and start up the car, unit starts up, it's gonna connect and then hook into to, to the default. And, and in this case, I have it defaulted to CarPlay. Uh, so I'll say right now, it's pretty quick. This is just a demo uh, phone that I'm using right now, so there's not much in it, right? But um, it's, it's very quick, there's no lag. You have all the different features, just like you would if it was a wired USB connection. I'm not gonna go through CarPlay here in this review much but it has all the standard features that you find like app controls, you know, you have Spotify, Pandora, you got GPS navigation via your, your maps or Google, Map, Google Maps app. Uh, all those different features are available uh, as a part of like the wireless and wired Apple CarPlay, Android Auto on, on, this, on this unit. So I'm gonna go back and I actually set this as the home button, this, this, touch, touch, uh, this touch button, I'll go through that in a bit. So next you have the radio, typical radio functionality with AM and FM. You uh, have 18 different presets here for FM that you can, you can set. So it's quite a few. I don't know if you'll ever use that many. Uh, also you have, when you switch to F, uh, excuse me, AM, you have 12 different presets here that you can, you can set. So typical functionality from you know, your seek to tuning uh, manually you know, all the, all the normal settings that, that come with a radio, uh, it, it, you know, it's available on this union. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna go back and, and carry on. You'll also see this has Sirius XM compatibility. I don't have this hooked up. You need a XM radio adapter in order for this to, to work along with a, a subscription, of course. I've listed the adapter in, in the article review that's, that's listed in the, the, the body of this, this video on caraudionow.com if you want you know, more information about that adapter. 
all of the standard features that you're gonna find on, on the normal XM radio on any head unit, they're gonna be available on this though, as long as you have a subscription in that adapter. You also see Bluetooth, I kind of went through this already. When you hook up the Bluetooth with a smartphone, you'll have the choice to default to CarPlay uh, or Android Auto, or just to use the standard Bluetooth features. So if you choose CarPlay or Android Auto, it's just gonna flip you to that as soon as you click it, right? So, and you'll see this, I have a CarPlay Android Auto device and, and it's gonna flip to that. Um, uh, you'll see here, right? You can select, I had multiple devices in that, I'll go through in a minute, but it's gonna, def it's gonna allow you to select which device you wanna go into Apple CarPlay and, and Android Auto. Um, but if in the case that you don't use or select uh, Android Auto and, and CarPlay, or you have a device that, that might not support that, it's gonna have the, the typical Bluetooth functionality from, from streaming audio, audio to you know, wireless, phone calls and and you know you'll be able to make and, and receive phone calls from this head unit via Bluetooth even outside of CarPlay and Android Auto. So I'll go back here to the home and you'll see here USB. I don't have a USB drive hooked up but this is where you can basically go through and browse some of the images etc that's on your USB drive. I hooked up my USB to this previously to see if uh, to see if it would play a video that I had loaded on the, my USB thumb drive, it wouldn't register that video at this time. So, like I mentioned er earlier, not really much of a multimedia head unit right now. That might change if they update the software here in future iterations. You know, Sony is always upgrading their uh, the the firmware or the software of these units, and and this actually makes it very easy for you to 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 upgrade them too you can just load it load the the firmware onto the usb drive and, and update it uh there's some other options too i'll go through um, i've i've had i've also had many questions about the the usb drive but this is this usb connection is is dedicated to a usb drive and the typical iPhone is not a compatible USB drive. Just to note that, you know, if you hook your, your iPhone in here and you have files on there, don't expect it to show up in this USB, uh, you know, feature that's, it's not going to show anything. Uh, so next you have settings, but before I, I go into the bulk of the settings here, cause that's, uh, a behemoth of its own, I'm going to just show you, uh, what, what else it is on the main screen, what other apps it has available. You know, if you, if you click on that button on, on the right, so uh, when you click this button, uh, it shows five additional icons. You have, you know, your phone, which will take you to your Bluetooth phone or directly to the phone section in, in CarPlay and Android Auto to, to, to go through and make a phone call. <clears throat> uh, it has three different camera inputs. So this is kind of a unique feature to this unit and worth calling out. So you can put three separate camera inputs into to this the back of this head unit and you can view them at any time you have rear view camera camera one camera two and this is great for for things like rvs or if you have you know a trailer that you have dedicated cameras on the sides to you can kind of view those at any time and and see what's on those cameras i don't have any of these hooked up again um you know but but it's worth pointing out that this is a cool feature three cameras is uh two, you know a couple more than than many of the head units on the uh, on the the market can can give you so and then finally you have devices and uh devices I'm going to get into in the in, in the bulk of the settings, but you know this is basically where you can control and manage the devices on the unit, which ones connected to Bluetooth, which ones connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, et cetera, et cetera. I'll get into that, um, but let's go back to the home and I'll get into the settings. So let's open up the settings. The first thing that you're going to see here in the settings at the at the top here is the device connection, which. I kind of just went through. If you select it though, here you can you can see and manage the devices that you have connected or have previously connected. You can add, you can remove them. Adding is pretty easy to do. You just click on the add button here and then select the device that you're, you select it on the device that you're hooking up. Um, so on your iPhone, you go into Bluetooth, you select, you know, 9500ES, I think is what it is. 
And if you have multiple devices connected here in, in the area, you can actually switch between them on the fly, which is cool. You know, if, if you have a friend in the car and you wanna hook their phone up to, to it, you, you're gonna connect it once and then <clears throat> you can come here and manage it. So uh, I'll just demo this real quick and select iPhone. And it, what it's gonna do is, is it's gonna connect you directly to, to that device. It's gonna boom, it's gonna, it's gonna pop up the Apple CarPlay or Android, Android Auto, Auto. And now the device is connected and you can manage, you can play your, your audio, you can make phone calls, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm gonna go back into the settings. The next thing that you have here is the sound selection, which is really where this head unit shines in my opinion. So if I click on this, it, it has a ton of new features that allow you to really have full control. Um, in particular, the, the, the EQ and, and crossover area, which I'll get into. I'm, I'm gonna start out with the, the EQ on the top here. This is a graphic equalizer. It also has, a, um, it also has an advanced parametric EQ down in the, the advanced section I'll go through a little later. So let's click on this. And uh, when, you, when you go into the EQ, you'll see that this is a 14 band graphic equalizer. And by default, you have a bunch of presets down here for you know R and B, rock, pop, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can see, um, and what's really nice about this is that you'll, if you find a, a setting or a preset that's close to what you like, you can actually use it as a base configuration and just adjust it where it needs. So you know it might get you ninety percent there, and many units that I've tested uh, on the market, you, you have to start from scratch, right? You have to start from the off and then you have to start, you know, one by one going through, which is an option here too. But if you find something that you like, for example, pop and you want to change it, you can either go to the EQ adjust or just click and, and, and adjust each of the bands manually here and save it as one of your custom, you know, one of two custom EQs that you have. So that's a pretty cool feature. But if you also wanted to, if you also wanted to go and start from scratch, it gives you that opportunity. You go to the off or the baseline here, you click EQ adjust, and then you can go and do one by one manually, right? And just kind of go through and uh, configure it. So I'm gonna go back out without saving. So pretty cool. I, I do like how it gives you the option to have a baseline you know, if, if, if you like the rock or the, the pop, it gets you really close. But if let's say there's too many, like it's too high or harsh, you can just kind of bring down those certain frequencies based on that preset. So pretty cool. So I'll go back to the, here I'm back in the sound settings. And the next thing that you see here is the subwoofer level. Let's just go through there. This is very base, uh, basic, right? You have subwoofer on, off, and then you have gain uh, or level, right? And you can select it up and down. If you have a subwoofer, this is kind of nice. You can get it uh, to a section or a level that you that you want. Um, and then you can, or, or you can just kind of control it on the fly if, if you'd like. So let me go back to the settings here. So next you have the balance and fader which is pretty straightforward. You know, you click and drag uh, and select the area that you want to adjust or control the volume of speakers for. Basically it, it will lower, you know, in this setting, it'll lower the volume of this side and this side and, and raise the, you know, front left speakers, right? Uh, it just kind of focuses the, the volume more than anything. Timing is differently, but <clears throat> if you go back uh, here, you have listening position, which is really timing. And uh, the timing section here is, is pretty advanced. You have different custom presets from the factory, or you can select a very specific customized, um, you know, setting and, and actually adjust the distance from each speaker to, you know, the position, the listening position that you want to set to. So if you wanted to set the listening position dead center and, you know, right before the dash, you can adjust the distance from each of these channels or speakers straight to that point manually so that all of the sound from each of these speakers reaches that point, that focus point at the same time. And the presets will do this too, based on whatever standards that Sony has, but you can really set the focus area and get the timing dialed in exactly to that focus point in, in the custom settings here and adjust each speaker or channel to that that point. I'll go back. 
a little further down, you have vinyl processor. I haven't really used this much, but it basically acts as a filter that, that mimics the sound of an old vinyl turntable or a record player. I haven't, again, I haven't played much with this and I don't really plan on it. This will just kind of change the output of the sound and mimic you know, the warm and the richness that you'd hear on a, a, an old turntable or record player. And then finally, you have the advanced section here, which is really where the bulk of the audio control is actually. So let's click in here and see what it's all about. So first up in the advanced settings, you have the subwoofer output, which basically allows you to select between a mono output and a stereo output. Um, you know, stereo is basically for if you have more than one subwoofer in most cases, but <clears throat> you can also control that here. And, you know, if you have a single subwoofer, you're likely going to use some in uh, the some mono selection, but it gives you that that control here. And then in the crossover section, which is pretty huge, it's a it's a big advancement over some of the other Sony head units that I've tested, like the AX5600 and the AD100. And it's because you have the the filter control, the slope at every channel here, so uh, including the subwoofer. Um, in particular, slope is a new one. I'm not going to get too too into what slope is, what you know the 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 high pass and low pass filters are in this review, but just know you have that control here. And in the in the subwoofer, you have phase, right? So depending on how you install your subwoofer, you'll have a little bit more control there. There's some references in the article that's in the description of this video on on caraudionow.com that kind of goes through slope and and what these are if you want to read up a little bit more about that. Back to the advanced. So finally, you have parametric EQ. This is a new feature. I haven't seen it on any Sony units up up until now, recently at least. You know, this is this is really an a, an expert or an advanced tuner. It's for the experts. And in here, you really have full control over the output of each channel, each speaker that you can very precisely adjust the sound of the output to. And, and at every one of these levels here, you can go in and select and change the frequency gain, Q factor, right, of, of each individual speaker. Very cool, very, a lot of control over, over the output here. And if you want to, you can go through here and you can, you know, you can adjust all at once. You can turn, you know, you can select none of them. You can turn them on and off, right? So uh, a very powerful feature, parametric EQ. This is a new feature uh, as a part of the Sony lineup of head units here. Uh, it's not available on the AX8100, the 5600s, right? But if you really want deep, control and, and precise control of the outputs. This is this is the unit and this is the settings that you're going to go into um, uh, uh, to, to do that. Let's go back. So that's it for, for the sound settings. Let's go back to the main settings here and see what else we have to go through. Okay, so next here in the settings, you have the customized section. And in this section, you can do two things. One, you can customize the keys of the screen here, like I mentioned earlier, and two, you can change the, the, the background, the wallpaper of this unit, and I'll show you how to do that. Let's start out with the custom keys. So here you can see, you can adjust the left key and the right key independently. So right now I have them set as home and mute. That's kind of easy for me if I just want to touch there, but there's also the home button up here. All the controls, you know, are at the top here. So whatever you want this to, to be, you can select it. Um, I'll just demo that. So let's say you wanted to do volume here, volume uh, down and volume up, right? You go here, you're gonna find volume down. I'm gonna select that for the left and then volume up. And I'm gonna select that down on, the, on, the, on the right. So now you have volume control on, on these two. So uh, you have other options as well, like next and previous, right? Next song you'd probably put on the right, previous on the left, home, source change, where you can you know, change between radio. These are just kind of hot keys, um, mute, display off, just to show you everything or none, right? If you don't want these to do anything. So let's go back. Second, so you have the wallpaper select. So I'm gonna walk you through this really quickly. I'm gonna grab something uh, to show you. When you go into the wallpaper select, <clears throat> you have these four different presets. You can see I already added a custom one here. I'm gonna go through this process though. 
So you can select the presets by default, or you can hook in a USB thumb drive. And it's worth pointing out that this unit, the USB thumb drive or the USB wire is actually not a USB, it's the USB-C. So you're gonna want like an adapter where you go, you know, this new USB to the, the traditional uh, USB. If you have a thumb drive that's, that's USB, I have this linked in the article in the description of this video too. So go to that article, it's in there, take a, take a read at it, but you're gonna want this in order to do it. And in my case, my thumb drive was just a normal USB. <clears throat> so let's go through, you're just gonna click on the plus. It's gonna default you to the uh, the folder where, or it's just going to pop up the the different images that are on your 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 thumb drive. You can also kind of browse through the folders to find something. Mine's on the root. Um, you're going to select that. It's going to give you a preview. Click OK. Boom. Select it. Right now it's there. You're going to go back, and it's going to be on your. It's going to be on your. Uh, I set that to volume. It's going to be on your home. Your home. Right. So now you can see your custom background. So let's go back into the settings. Okay, so next here is the application settings. And in here you're gonna find control over your camera inputs, which is actually pretty intricate. I'll go through that. XM Radio and, and iDatalink um, Maestro. So I don't have XM Radio or iDatalink connected since this is my demo unit. But like I said earlier, you need an adapter for the radio and you also need an adapter for the um, iDatalink. So this unit is fully functional with iDatalink with the proper adapter. You have, you know, th this will give you insights into your vehicle, right? So that things like temperature, speed, RPM, much more. I really recommend you going into iDatalink's website to learn more about it, but it's a really cool feature of this head unit. It's a, it's a major upgrade too. It, it, it looks pretty incredible when you hook everything up. You get a, a bunch of cool insights about your, your car and you can cu customize the screen, what it looks like, what the gauge is, the different backgrounds, all sorts of stuff. I, yeah, I take a look at iDatalink's website. It's a cool feature that this is compatible with doing. In the meantime, let me go into the camera input and show you what's there. For each of the camera inputs, you can basically select the orientation of the, the video feed depending on where and how your camera is mounted. So you can flip it basically horizontally. <clears throat> also cool, you can adjust the rear view camera guidelines depending on how you, or, or you can turn it off, depending on how you install your camera and how big your vehicle is, if it's a truck or not, you can click and drag each of these corners like a trapezoid and and adjust the settings to your to your car so it's it's pretty cool uh you'll probably want to do that you know depending on where your camera is installed if it's on your bumper if it's on you know, your tailgate or if it's on your or your license plate so on and so forth it gives you that ability so that's pretty much it here you do have one last thing rear camera interruption this is whether or not you want your backup camera to appear on your screen when you when you shove it into to reverse so you can adjust that too that's it for the application settings though that i can test right now so let's go back to the settings okay so finally last thing in settings is the system a bunch of standard features a couple things to point out here and you've got your language your date time demo mode that's what people put on if it's on like a shelf at best buy steering wheel settings this is a cool one <clears throat> so this unit comes with an adapter uh, when I say an adapter, it's basically two wires that change uh, into like an aux input that you plug into the back so that you have steering wheel control. You have to, so there's two ways to go about doing this. You can either use the, the very sort of raw uh, adapter that they have, find the two wires in your harness uh, or the three, two or three wires in your harness, uh, your car's harness that, that transmit the steering wheel controls you'll plug it into the back of this you'll program every single you know function that you want uh, the the alternative is to buy a an adapter <clears throat> that you will that basically plugs into your harness there's no like hard wiring or anything it plugs into the back of this it has default you know a default configuration that typically will already be aligned um, with you know what this 
head unit is expecting, you know, in terms of next previous volume and, and so on and so forth. Um, or you can still go in and customize those too. So uh, pretty cool. You can either save yourself a couple bucks if if your your vehicle is compatible with the harness that comes with this unit, and that will require hard hard wiring. Or you know you can you can buy the extra unit and, and or the extra adapter and do it that way, and and either have the default ones or customize it too. So pretty cool. System sound, you can turn it on or off. Volume settings, you can adjust each of these different types of volumes independently. So nav navigation guide, for example, if, if you're on the road and the navigation is just screaming at you, uh, you can turn that volume of the navigation guidance down a little bit, specifically independent of your, the, your music, or you can turn it up, right? Same with voice recognition, ringtone, all those sort of things. Dimmer is pretty straightforward. When, when you turn your lights on, it dims, the, you, so you can turn that on and off and, and how, you know, how drastic it dims. So um, no, it does not dim in different colors, uh, but but it this is just a, a preview of how it will look when it dims. <clears throat> so key brightness, pretty straightforward, how bright these keys are when you turn the, everything off. You have the driver position, I mean, if you're in, you're in the UK, Australia, those places, you can turn left or right. Mic adjust is basically setting parameters of your car so that, you know, it, it kind of picks up your voice accordingly based on the car that you're in, how far away you are from the mic, etc. Bluetooth signal, you can turn it on or off. PSK, I think, is rela related to Bluetooth where when you type in or when you connect your device, it gives you a code so you can change that code when you're connecting bluetooth it's more of like a safety or security feature system information software update interesting one you can either go to sony.com and download the latest version of their software put it into a usb thumb drive click on this button it'll upload it install it everything or you can plug in your phone and update it via USB tethering if your phone supports it. So it'll go through, connect to the internet, pull the latest one automatically. So that's pretty much it. Let's go back to the home. So there you have it. An early look at Sony's XAV9500ES head unit, all of its features. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel. I'm always trying to get new products and review them here from speakers to subwoofers and head units, you name it, accessories. Also, you can check out some of the custom installs that we've done, some of the cool work, all of our best list, our recommended products, because we've got a ton of them at caraudionow.com. Thanks again.